Uh, Senator from the 29th for a question. Will the Senator yield for a series of questions? Absolutely. Um, you made the comment in your remarks that the bill before us would allow uh, a faith-based organization to discriminate against an interracial married couple. Is that right? Um, I assume you're contending that under federal law that would be impermissible. Well, no, I'm just asking if that, if I understood you correctly during your remarks, that I this, think that this that, bill that, would allow that. Um, I think that that is a, a, a very valid question to ask, whether it would do that. Okay. And you're familiar with the Supremacy Clause of the U.S. Constitution? Absolutely. Right and there is a federal law that prohibits racial discrimination. Is that correct? There is. And that federal law would supersede any intended or unintended effect of this, this bill as far as any sort of race discrimination. Is that correct? I think, Senator, when you're passing a law that's written as broadly as this is, you do need to look at the language contained within the law itself, because that's what people are going to see, and ask if you've properly contended with those questions. Right. And so my question is, because you, you've made a serious charge here about the effect of this legislation, the federal law that prevents racial discrimination would prevent any race discrimination, whether this bill is, is made law or not. Isn't that correct? I would say that if we had not engrossed the bill, it would have been wise of us to um, amend it so that that was clear. Now, you also mentioned that there were implications regarding uh, polygamous marriage and child marriage as well. Is that right? I think it's inartfully drafted and those questions are alive depending on how you read, what word you read lawful to modify, yes. And, and at line 104 of the bill, line 103 and 104 of the bill, the, the religious belief that we're talking about is that religious belief regarding lawful marriage, correct? Correct, and as I said, it depends on if lawful modifies belief or marriage. Do you agree with me that both polygamous marriage and child marriage is unlawful by the laws of the state of Georgia? I do. The question is whether or not we are talking about someone's belief about what marriage should be lawful or whether we are talking about what marriage is currently lawful. And if it's someone's belief about what marriage should be lawful, then that would encompass persons whose belief is that marriage should not be limited to two people. And as far as, uh, again, the, the argument about polygamous marriage, at, at, following line 104 after lawful marriage, it says between two people, right? So wouldn't that exclude any polygamous union of any kind? Again, it would not if, if, what, if, the, if the, the question is on someone's belief about lawful marriage about two people. Now, uh, you add, let me ask you just if you yield for Cer a certainly, more. Certainly, certainly. Um, shortly after the Supreme Court decision, a University of Georgia professor took the position uh, that a consequence of that decision was that religious organizations that teach traditional marriage should be taxed. So I'd, I'd like to know, do you believe that houses of worship in this state that teach traditional marriage should be subject to state tax, local property tax, and other taxes? That's not something that I have delved into. I'm not certain I know all the parameters about what you're asking me about. Um, my concern is that you know, there may be a time, viewpoints change, right? Culture changes, um, which is one of the reasons that the discussions on this very topic are so different than they were 25 or, or 30 years ago. So I do have concerns that if we as society coalesce around a different viewpoint in the future, that this legislation would be able to nullify those actions. So, so again, my question though is, do you believe that houses of worship which teach traditional marriage should be taxed in view of the Supreme Court decision last summer? I really don't have any information about that topic. I'm sorry. Okay. How about, um, do, you, do you believe that faith-based adoption agencies, be, which because of their belief on marriage and the family, only adopt out to uh, married opposite-sex couples should be shut down by government? No, I don't. And do you believe that religious schools which teach traditional marriage should be stripped of their accreditation because they teach traditional marriage? Nope. Do you believe that religious schools ought to be free to enforce morality clauses in contracts to reinforce their teaching on marriage in the family? Mm, not really. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you. Chair recognize Senator from the 54th for a question. Thank you, Mr. President. Will my friend and seatmate yield? Yes, I will. Um, Senator, I, I, I'm trying not to be duplicative. Uh, the, the judiciary chair took uh, some of the things I wanted to 
to ask you about. I do want to follow up on, uh, in particular, you, you listed sort of this uh, parade of constitutional infirmities, and, and I want to start with the, the cases you cited first, the, the Reed versus Town of Gilbert and the Rosenberger cases. Uh, both of those, you would agree, are fir traditional First Amendment cases. Isn't that, isn't that true? I don't know if I know. Yes. Well, isn't it true that Reed de dealt with a sign ordinance and Rosenberger yes, it did. dealt with yes. newspapers? Yes. And you would, you would agree that nothing in, in uh, House Bill 757 deals with the media in, in any way. In other words, this is not a restraint on any sort of publication uh, in, in any way, shape, or form. You know, I'm not totally sure that that wouldn't, couldn't could, come into play. Could, could you direct me to the provisions that would deal with a restraint on, on media and publication? Well, I agree with you on traditional media. But as far as signs or putting things of that nature up, that's where I think maybe we're, that's the caveat that I was trying to put out. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, on your establishment clause cases, I think the one you cited uh, was a uh, uh, state of Thornton. Um, and yes. my question to you, or a couple of questions on that if I could, um, could you tell us what you believe the unjustified burdens of this legislation would be in, in, under the, the balancing test for an establishment clause case? Sure, um, and again, this is, uh, as we discussed, legislation uh, that's, there are a lot of different constitution, different weighty constitutional questions that come up as we discuss this. No doubt there will be uh, court cases that have to analyze this. But let me point out before I mention a few examples that, as I was always told by my uh, political advisors during my campaigns, if you're explaining, you're losing. And that's really the problem with this legislation, that perception does become reality, and if you're explaining, you're losing on the national stage. But here are our scenarios that, at the very least, would, we would have to explain. And uh, again, reiterate, if you're explaining, you're losing. Um, I have a few. I have, I'm sorry. Um, here we go. Taxpayer funded homeless shelter could refuse a single mother and her child a bed. Hospital could deny a man the right to speak to his dying spouse for the last time. Or a city funded domestic violence shelter could refuse to offer a woman safety because she is sleeping with a man who's not her husband. Thank Those you. results would murder and, har and harm others. Could you identify in uh, the, the definition of adverse action w which paragraph of those actions would fall under? Well, if, no, it, it, so say those actions were taken and they were by, uh, say, a, a homeless shelter or a nonprofit that we say we state fund. Yes. So say the, that we, as the General Assembly, disagreed with that, those actions, then we would be, our hands would be tied in what, whether or not we could withdraw that money or take any other actions against that nonprofit. Can you help me out there? Yeah, I mean, it says deny, withhold, or reduce, or exclude, or terminate any public benefit to the faith-based organization? On the exclusive basis, and I direct you to the operative language, on the exclusive basis that that organization espoused any particular view, view on marriage. Right, if their view was that, for, I mean, it, it encompasses sexual activity, right? So. If their view is that people who are unmarried, that, that I mean, it says that. I'm, so Senator, what I'm trying to get at is the fulfillment of a contract. The fulfillment of a contract. Okay, I understand what you're saying. The fulfillment mm -hmm. of a contract. Okay. And, and We'd have to look they, at every single contract. If you, and if you have a contract that you don't fulfill, it's terminated based on lack of fulfillment, not based yep. on your views, not based on your ministry, not based on your religious point of view. It's based on your lack of fulfillment of the obligations you undertook in the grant. If we don't write good grants as a state, is that not our fault as opposed to Georgian's fault? It certainly is. Again, if you're explaining, you're losing. And I guess we'll go back and review every single contract to make sure that actually the provisions that this uh, bill clearly opens the doors for would actually not be acceptable. We'll, we'll have, we'll, I suppose, go back and make that clear in all those contracts. Sir, will you continue to yield for a couple more questions? Certainly, certainly. Uh, and, and just for the record, as a father, uh, if I'm explaining I'm losing, then I guess I'm losing all the time. <laughs> uh, I feel the same way. <laughs> I, I, I do want to go back to the, the question. Um, I also want to follow up on the judiciary's chair about federal uh, 
protection uh, based on race and, and, and other mm -hmm. uh, protected categories. And I'd also point out, obviously, Loving versus Virginia. Sure, of course. Uh, yeah. Guarantees a constitutional right uh, to interracial marriage. That's a constitutional and, right to interracial so, marriage. Yeah. So I, I think we've sort of skipped past the notion that that would ever be considered unlawful, hopefully, mm -hmm. in our country. I want to ask you, when um, or which Georgians do you think should lose their tax uh, credits, tax exemptions, um, or any tax uh, preference based on their view of marriage, whatever it may be? Which Georgians do you view? I don't think any of them should. Which Georgians do you think should lose their job based on their view of marriage? No, no, that's, yeah, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't agree with the premise. Which Georgians do you think should lose their public benefits or their access to education based on their view of marriage? Um, I think without further elaboration, I'm unable to answer your question. You know, this blanket, which Georgians thing is well, Senator, incredibly I, broad. I, 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 there's well, no way I can speak to that, actually. Thank you, Senator. I'll try, I, <laughs> as broad as it may sound, the, these are the exact provisions of the bill. So these are the exact paragraphs that you'll see on line 71 through 88. These are the things the government is prohibited from doing. Taking away a, Georgia, a Georgian's tax credit, tax status, or exemption for charitable contributions or otherwise, employment, grants, contracts, public benefits, eligibility for education, or access to a free speech forum based on whatever their belief of marriage free is. Free speech and forum, I, you and I are on the forum, you and I are definitely on the same page. As far as the others, look. Loving versus Virginia, you just mentioned it. There was absolutely a time when government made it impermissible for interracial couples to get married. And there may well be a time where we decide it's impermissible to withdraw, or, or it's impermissible for an organization to have that same viewpoint where they're discriminating against same-sex couples. And I would not like to, us to have in Georgia code any law that makes that day more difficult. Where, where is discrimination authorized in the bill? Um, you may... Yeah, it's choosing, it, it's the person who's actually acting is the one who makes the discriminatory judgment. Based on? Based on their view about marriage or sex. And a Georgian doesn't have the right to hold whatever view they hold about marriage? That's your position? Uh, I do not think that we should enshrine into law their ability to take action based on that belief, no. Senator, I'll close, uh, and we may be able to continue uh, here at our seats, which I, would, I, would which I do that. enjoy with my friend. <laughs> and, and I'll close with this. I, I want to ask you if you agree with this statement, if I could. And I, I, sure. I apologize, I ask your indulgence. Do you agree that each person has the natural and inalienable right to worship God each according to the dictates of that person's own conscience, and that no human authority should in any case control or interfere with such right of conscience? Uh, certainly, freedom of religion is a dear American value. It is absolutely enshrined in our Constitution, but we may not choose particular religious viewpoints above others, nor may we single out religious viewpoints above secular viewpoints in the governmental space. Senator, uh, I, I told you that was my last question. I apologize. Would it surprise you that that is the exact paragraph three from Article One, Section One of the Georgia Constitution? And I would submit to you that from the beginning of our republic, we have always protected religious viewpoints, frankly, above all others. Would that surprise you that that, that, that argument is in our own state constitution? Well, I guess it would surprise um, the Supreme Justice Thomas in. Um, Reed versus Town of Gilbert, or um, or maybe the, it's the Rosenberger one. And again, these are these are these are intricate constitutional questions with balancing tests. What we're really talking about is the perception of what kind of state Georgia is. And I would posit to my colleagues that with all of these examples and talking about whether or not you can discriminate against people for being gay or for being single, or for having gotten divorced and then remarried, because some people believe that, you, that once you got married, that's it. Even if you remarried someone else, you should not be having sex with them because that was your true marriage, right? You know, if you're talking about all that stuff, I, I do think we need to be very careful because, again, colleagues, if you're in this space and you're explaining, you're losing. Thanks so much. Thank you, friend. Thank you Mr. President.